Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 7 on Climate Science. This is video number four, and this time we're going to continue our look at natural greenhouse cycles by looking at climate variation in the Earth's orbit. This is yet another one uh, in this little series that we're looking at to uh, assess the different causes of natural climate variation and the time scales over which those cycles and variations occur. And we're going to, as I say, in this time focus on the changes in the Earth's orbit around the sun. The episodic nature of the Earth's glacial and interglacial periods within the present ice age, which has been going for about the last couple of million years, has been caused primarily by cyclic changes in the Earth's circumnavigation of uh, the Sun. So what we can start to look at here is some variations in eccentricity, in obliquity, and uh, in the axial precession, and look at how they might have influenced the Earth's orbit and how that can also have a resulting impact on global temperatures and also seasonal variations. Cycles that are associated with these changes in how the Earth is orbiting the Sun uh, have come to be known as the Milankovic cycles. And these are after Militan Milankovic, who was a Serbian astronomer and mathematician. And he's generally credited with calculating the uh, magnitude of the effects of each of these um, different cycles and we're going to be looking at those uh, in this particular uh, video. Taken together, variations in the three cycles uh, create some alterations in the seasonality of solar radiation that reaches the Earth's surface and uh, as a result of that we can have times of increased or decreased solar radiation and so therefore we can have changes in or natural changes I guess we might call these in climate systems as a result of some of these different naturally occurring events. To the extent we've also seen some glacial and interglacial periods that kind of correspond to the types of um, cycles that we're seeing associated with these Milankovitch cycles. And it's important that we understand some of the changes that can link to um, natural climate change so that we can understand Again, as we've talked about previously, why if rates change, if there's anything that's happening that slightly doesn't fit the pattern uh, of previous cycles, then we can kind of try and understand why people might be concerned about it. So in terms of the Earth's orbit around the sun, there's three important things that we need to be aware of. The first is eccentricity. This is changing the shape of the Earth's orbit. The second is obliquity, which is the changing angle of the Earth's axis. We know um, that the Earth isn't um, rotating perfectly straight up and down, so there's a change uh, in the axis of the Earth as well as its axis of rotation. So there's, a, there's three different uh, aspects to what we're looking at here. Uh, the third of those is called precession, and that is really, I guess, uh, most easily demonstrated with a top. If you spin a top, you can kind of see that the top, the bottom of the top doesn't stay exactly where it is, but it kind of makes these little circles. And that's what we that's what we call precession, and that's what we see happening with the Earth as well. So look, let's look at each of these, because variations alter the seasonality of solar radiation reaching the Earth's surface. And the importance of that seasonality is that's what gives us our, our summers and our winters. We probably in, intrinsically know um, that there's less seasonality around the equator, the consistency of sunlight um, throughout the entire year reduces the, the distinction between the warmer months and the cooler months. And obviously, as we get closer to the poles, that, that seasonality becomes, um, differences become most stark to the point that when you're on the poles, you can get 24 hours of sunshine in the summer and no sunshine in the winter. Uh, so there's definitely some significant difference that we see in seasonality. But these Milankovitch cycle variations uh, can also have an impact on seasonality, not just the timings, but also the locations in terms of uh, how far north and south those seasons are uh, continuing. Times of increased or decreased solar radiation directly influence the Earth's climate and impact on the advance and retreat of Earth's glaciers. So we're going to be looking at each of these three factors and we're going to see how they influence the climate systems and also um, glaciation events, so the cryosphere. There's a nice diagram here and, and, and or a series of graphs, I guess, is a better description um, and probably not something I've included it in the booklet, 
but not something that you kind of need to, to be taking too much awareness of at this stage, except for the fact that it's cyclic. So you can see that over time, um, when we're going back over many uh, hundreds of thousands of years, that we, we're seeing these consistent cycles take place. So we know that the atmosphere becomes cooler and warmer. We do go from um, uh, greenhouse to ice house conditions, and we've talked about that in the past in this uh, module. But what we want to try and do is to see how consistent are those patterns and what sort of factors can impact uh, on each of these cycles. But the first thing we want to talk about is changes in eccentricity. And there's a really nice series of sort of mini animations uh, on the NASA site that give you a little bit of a look at the types of um, factors that we're talking about when we're talking about each of these three components of the Milankovitch cycles. So the first one that we want to talk about are changes in eccentricity. So around about the 100,000 year cycles. So eccentricity is basically describing the path of the Earth as it orbits the sun. So we know that this is in a circle. Um, we, we can go back as far as um, Kepler to understand the um, elliptical nature of the orbits of the planets around the sun. And because it's an ellipse, that means that there are times when the distance between the planet and the sun, and that means there are times when the distance between the planet and the sun are closer and times when they are further apart. So because this is describing an ellipse, we do see some minor changes in the way that the planet is orbiting. What we need to keep in mind for all three of these Milankovitch cycles is that if the Earth itself or parts of the Earth are closer to the Sun, they're going to receive more solar radiation. That's going to potentially increase the um, temperature of the air. It's maybe going to increase the temperature of the land and perhaps it's going to then be trapped and uh, lead to increased warming conditions. Perhaps we'll even have an albedo effect if we've got cooling conditions where more of that radiation is being reflected back into space. So that's one of the reasons we're talking about these sort of changes in the Earth's orbit and how they might impact on the natural um, cycles of climate. So when we look at eccentricity, what we're looking at is a change in the season lengths. So what we're looking at is season lengths. That is, in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment, the summers are around about four and a half days longer than the winters and the spring three days longer than uh, autumns. So this is data that's coming through from NASA. As the eccentricity, the, the degree of difference, if you like, between um, the shortest and the longest components of this elliptical path decrease, the season lengths even out. So you can imagine if we were describing a, a perfect circle with a radius that was consistent in our entire 360 degree orbit, that there would be no changes in that sense. We'd get the same amount of solar radiation in terms of our distance from the sun all the time. But because different distances between the Earth's closest approach to the sun, so when it's very close, we call it the perihelion, and its furthest departure is the aphelion, then we are talking about some, some not insignificant changes. So about 3.4% variation in those distances. And so this means that we definitely do get more solar radiation that's coming in during the times when we are closer to the sun than those times when we're further away. The second thing that we want to talk about are, is changes in obliquity. And obliquity is responsible specifically for the seasons. And that's because the Earth's on a tilt. So obviously one thing that's going to create seasonality is um, our motion around the planet, around the sun and therefore how close and how far away we are. But if we're perfectly straight, and if we're um, orbiting in a circle, then we don't see the same effect of seasonality that we do uh, presently. And one of the reasons we see presently is that we're not um, a perfectly straight orbiting globe, but we're actually on a tilt. And so you can see the tilt in the diagram here, another one of these little um, animations from NASA and the tilt angle varies between 22 and 24 and a half degrees. And so this is what actually draws one hemisphere closer to the sun as we're moving around um, than the other. And this is also one of the reasons why we have, say, summer in the northern hemisphere when it's winter in the southern hemisphere and vice versa. As the axial tilt angle increases, so our that this effect of seasonality also increases. So we get so we get a, a greater tilt angle 
and more extreme seasonality as a result of this um, leaning in, if you like, towards the sun or leaning away. So if we get these large tilt angles, then we can um, get a lot of heat. We can have deglaciation, so melting and retreating of glaciers and ice sheets. This effect is not uniform across the globe. So as we, because of the tilt, we're getting, we're seeing different effects in different latitudes. This is why there's still a consistency around things like the equator, uh, because the relative change in its distance from the sun is not much. Whereas the relative change in the distance between the North and the Southern Hemisphere because of the tilt is more significant. And it's most significant uh, at the poles. So we talk about the equator versus the poles and we can see some quite different um, effects of seasonality as a result of these particular um, interactions. Changes in obliquity are, are, are suggested to occur over around 40,000 year cycles. And that's just a small sort of rotation between um, that, that axis of tilt. The final one for us to talk about is precession. And as I said, this is, uh, this is like what happens when you spin a top. It's the wobble that's associated with the movement of the top around uh, describing a little circle. So, um, so the, the top kind of spins, but it makes a little circle. So again, it's going to move a little closer or a little further away from the um, sun, and therefore we're going to have some slight differences uh, in seasonality again. So the axial precession makes seasonal contrasts slightly more extreme in one hemisphere and less in the other. So this is the first thing is the um, contrasts. If the perihelion, which is current in the winter in the northern hemisphere and the summer in the southern hemisphere is in operation, that means we're, we're close in our orbit around the sun, we're a little closer at the moment. So that's going to uh, increase those effects of um, seasonality already. But then we can also um, extrapolate this to uh, the types of changes that might occur as a result of these um, axial tilts and precessions as well. So when we're kind of sneaking a little closer, we're going to get even hotter summers. Um, although the side that's away is probably going to be a little bit more moderate. In these sorts of axial precessions, we get a flip sort of every, every half cycle, if you like. And so therefore, the um, variations that we saw in the southern hemisphere with more moderate conditions in the northern hemisphere, as we go through the cycle, halfway through the cycle, we'll have a flip. So the northern hemisphere will experience more extremes and um, the southern hemisphere more moderate conditions. So one of the things that we need to talk about is that precession affects the seasonal timings relative to the closest and furthest points around the sun. The bottom line, of course, is that this is not going to have such a significant effect that we're going to end up with a white Christmas in the southern hemisphere. It's not going to shift the season that significantly, but it has small effects. And remember, one of the things that we're trying to do here is we're trying to track over time, some of these important effects that have had an impact on changes in climate um, throughout um, ancient history. So we want to know if there's been periods where the Earth's been warmer and periods where the Earth's been cooler, which they have. And we want to know some of the reasons for that. And we know that there's some cycles that are part of that. And they include tectonic cycles, super cycles, volcanic eruptions, and the orbit of the Earth around the Sun and its relative position or the part of that uh, planet, our planet that is closer to the Sun or further away from the Sun and how that impacts on things like seasonality. But there is one more factor that we've also seen influence um, climate over uh, ancient times and that is ocean circulation. And we'll look at that in the next video. Thanks for watching.